Hello everyone. Welcome to Living Coats in your living room. My name is Ashley and I'm one of the educators here at the Living Coast Discovery Center. During this time, we are bringing you different interactive videos on Facebook every day, Monday to Friday at 11 a.m. Now these different videos will be posted and shared to our YouTube channel, so be sure to check those out as well. So if you tune in later or you wanna rewatch it, you can always find it on our Facebook page as well as on our YouTube channel. Teachers, that is a great way for you to be able to share with the rest of your Google Classroom right now during this time. Now we are gonna be bringing you all kinds of different interactive opportunities to learn about nature and our native animals that call San Diego home. Today, we're going to be focusing on a group of animals called arthropods. Now, you might have joined us a couple weeks ago when we started a video about crustaceans. And if you remember from back then, we actually talked about how crustaceans are considered a group of arthropods. Arthropods is our very, group, very big and diverse group of animals that can have over 80,000 different species in it. So before we focused on those crustaceans, which is a secondary grouping of arthropods, but today we're gonna to be focusing on two different groups, the insects and arachnids. Now, do you remember what we said arthropods are? Do you remember what three characteristics all arthropods had that kept them together? Well, arthro is going to be a Greek root and it actually is going to mean jointed and pod is going to mean foot. So arthropod actually translates from Greek to jointed legs or jointed feet. Now this has kind of been modified over time to refer to jointed appendages and all arthropods are gonna have those jointed appendages. Another thing that all arthropods have has to do with the outside of their body. Do you remember what they have on the outside that helps protect them, give them their shape and their structure? That's right, it's going to be exoskeletons. So all arthropods have exoskeletons that's a skeleton on the outside of their body and their jointed legs or appendages. And another thing that they all have is going to be their segmented bodies. So when you look at their bodies, it's not one piece like ours is, it's going to have clear segments out. Now today we're going to be focusing in on those insects and the arachnids. So can you guys think of any examples of what might be included in those? What is an insect? What is an arachnid? Can you think of any of those individuals? Be sure to comment them and ask us questions. We love to hear back from you guys throughout these videos. Now we've often heard of these two terms, insects and arachnids, but do you know how to tell those two animals apart? Did you know that an insect is different from an arachnid? All right, well, we're going to start with insects today. So let me grab one of my examples here. So insects and arachnids are going to be different. They do have those same similarities that put arthropods all together, but there are some differences between them. The first thing is going to be looking at their legs. An insect has six legs. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six six different legs and I think this side will be better for you to be able to see they have three different segments to their body so they have their head their thorax and their abdomen these three different body parts are going to be the head thorax and the abdomen some insects have wings like this bee but not all insects have bees I have bees all insects don't have wings but some do now with an arachnid, it's gonna be a little bit different. Arachnids have how many legs? How many legs does a spider have? That's right, eight. So they have eight legs, nice and big ones on these ones here. So we got our four on this side and four on this side. Those are those eight legs, but they actually only have two body segments. You can see this pretty easily on both sides of this spider model. We have the cephalothorax and the abdomen. 
the cephalothorax, that's this part here, that's going to be the combination of the head and the chest region. So that's where most of those internal organs are going to be housed. It's going to be right here in this region here. And then we have the abdomen. So just two main body parts. So arachnids have two body parts and eight legs, while insects have six legs and three body parts. All right, so that's going to be your true difference between an insect and an arachnid. Let's go ahead and take a couple practice rounds. What about this one here? What is this? Is this an insect or an arachnid? Bonus points if you can tell me what it actually is. What is the name of this creature? So we've got how many legs? We have six legs. And if you look very closely, you can see we do have those three body segments. So we have our head, our thorax, and our abdomen. Now, this is an insect. It just has an extended out or an elongated abdomen. So this is a dragonfly, and it falls under that insect category. What about this one? What do you guys think this is? Is this an insect or an arachnid? This one's kind of a tricky one. It can get a lot of people. So remember, you want to look at the legs and the body parts. How many segments do you see in its body? And how many legs does it have? Now, this has four legs on this side with one a little crisscrossed. <laughs> four legs on this side. So that means we have eight legs. And then if you look at its body, it's kind of hard to tell apart, right? But it does have two segments. It's a little easier if we look at it from this side. We have our cephalothorax region and then the extended out elongated abdomen. So this is going to be an arachnid. Now, do you know what kind of animal this is? What the name of this animal is? This is a scorpion. We do have them here in California, especially in southern San Diego in the nice sunny areas. And a lot of people don't realize that they're here, but we do have scorpions that live here. So make sure when you go out in our deserts, you are being careful and watching out for them. All right, I have some smaller ones for us to practice with as well. They're a little bit trickier though. What do you guys think? What is this one? It's kind of hard for me to hold because it's so small. <laughs> what do you think? Is a cockroach an insect or an arachnid? So remember, you want to check its body parts, the segments, and how many legs it has. So a cockroach is, in fact, an insect. It has our three legs on this side, three legs on this side. From this side, you can't see those distinct body segments, but you can kind of see them a little bit on this side. So we have our head, our thorax, and then the abdomen down here. So the legs generally connect to that thorax region. So it makes it a little easier for you to be able to tell those parts apart. All right, I have one more tricky one for you guys. What do you think? This one is. Is this an insect or an arachnid? So we do have different body segments and we have a different number of legs. It can be kind of hard to count these ones because they're so long. What do you think this one is? This is an insect. It's got six legs and three body parts. All right, so now that you guys can tell apart an insect from an arachnid, we're gonna go on a bug hunt. We're gonna go look around here at the Living Coast Discovery Center. We're gonna go look and see what kind of bugs, insects, arachnids, or what other else we can find. Now, 
we're gonna find a lot of different things out here because I'm standing in our compost garden here at the Living Coast. And that means that we have lots of nutrient rich soils and lots of different plants. So there's a wide variety of different things that we're gonna get a chance to find. Now you can come along with us on our bug hunt and then later today, you can do your own back backyard bug hunt. So you can go looking around in your neighborhood, in your backyard, even in your kitchen and see what kind of bugs you can find. Arthropods can be found everywhere as they're so distinct. If you're gonna go on a bug hunt though, you do need to make sure you have your bug box. Now I have this really fancy one that has a magnifying glass on the top, but you don't need to have a fancy one like this. You can use any clear see-through container. So anything like a strawberry box, whenever you got your strawberries, or the blueberry container, any clear plastic see-through container will work for this project. Now, you do wanna make sure that your bug box is a good size for you. You don't wanna put anything too big inside of your bug box either, because you don't wanna hurt them. You wanna make sure you can easily put them in and easily take them out, because we do wanna release the bugs after we found them. So let's go see what we can find. Now here at the Living Coast, we have this beautiful worm bin, which means we're almost guaranteed to be able to find at least something. Oh yeah, so I've got all kinds of things in here. So here's the first thing we can find. This is a worm. Now, a worm doesn't have legs. So is it an insect? It's not. It does have segmented body parts but a worm is not a true insect. It's gonna be in a different group called annelids. All right, let's put that worm guy back. Let's see what else we can find in here. All right, hmm. We've got some little guys like these. So sometimes you can pick up the bugs easily just with your hand. And sometimes you need to put them in your box. All right, so this is a sow bug, sometimes referred to as a roly-poly, but this bug also is not an insect. Can you see how many legs it has? So this is an uh, animal that belongs in the arthropod grouping still, but it's actually called an isopod. So it's a little bit different than an insect because it has more legs than what an insect would traditionally have. But it does still have those segmented bodies and an exoskeleton. So we're gonna put him back and see what else we can find. There was something else in here. I saw it a little bit ago. Let's see if I can find him again. Well, I think he ran away. Bugs are good at doing that. Let's go see what else we can find. We have lots of fun things to find here at the center. Now here, we've actually been able to find a caterpillar chrysalis. Now this chrysalis has a caterpillar on the inside and it's waiting until it's ready to emerge and become a butterfly. And if we look through it with the sunlight, you might be able to see the caterpillar on the inside. Now this one, I'm not gonna put in my bug box because it's too big and I don't wanna damage it. So I wanna make sure that I can let this caterpillar go through its life cycle and emerge to become a beautiful butterfly when it's time for it to come out. So even if you don't think you have any bugs to find in your area, you can always find all kinds of different bugs. They're everywhere. Arthropods are so common that you can find them in bushes, in the dirt, on the soil. It really doesn't matter where you're looking. How many of you have been in the bathroom and seen a spider web in the shower? Arthropods are everywhere. If you are out bug hunting though, you do wanna make sure you're being careful. We don't wanna pick up anything that could hurt ourselves 
like a spider because it might be potentially venomous. And we don't want to pick up any scorpions or ants, things that might be able to sting us, okay? We want to make sure we leave those alone. Now here, I know we have lots of little beetles that are found on this plant. This plant is called the bladder pod and it always has these beautiful little red and black beetles in it. So let's check it out. So I'm going to hold it like this and let our camera zoom in. So you can see it's got black and red spotting all over its coloration pattern. Can you see its legs? Let's see if I can turn it if he'll stay. How many legs do you see? Of course he turns around. <laughs> So this one does have three legs on each side, so that makes six and segments to its body. Now it's kind of hard to distinguish those segments, but you can see its head and then kind of like a rectangle shape. And then you can see where the wings are going to be tucked behind on this beetle. So this is an insect. Now one of the benefits of my bug box is that it does have this magnifying glass on the top but I'm not entirely sure that it'll work for you to be able to see with the camera, but that is a benefit that you can have. So if you have a magnifying glass at home, be sure to use it when you go out and look for your bugs. Now I'm gonna return this beetle back to this bladder pod bush because we always wanna make sure we put those bu bugs back safely and gently so that they can continue to do what they need to do. Our insects and arachnids are great for our environment and they're very important to them. So we wanna make sure whatever we catch in our bug boxes, we release when we're all done checking them out. Now, if you have any questions about arthropods, any bugs, insects, let us know. We'd be happy to answer those for you. There's also an, ad an additional worksheet if you would like to draw a bug that you found. You can draw it on, as if you were looking at it under a microscope. All right, thanks for joining us here today. And we hope to see you next time on Living Coast in Your Living Room.